Welcome to Native Engineering. Today we are doing Angular Machine, Engineering Science and 4. We have already dealt with a linear motion in N3. Now we want to look at Angular Motion. Basically, Angular Motion is rotational motion. It's motion that takes place in circles. Let's have our wheel as an example of center O and we draw a line to this point and then we name it OA. We know that this is our radius. And then we rotate this wheel so that our OA is now in this position. We will name it A1. Now, one thing we know is that if this wheel was, re was resting on a horizontal plane or on a plane, the distance from A to A1 will be our displacement, which is S. That is our linear displacement. But now we are dealing with angular motion. We will make use of the angle, which is theta. Theta is the angular displacement. And it can be measured in degrees and in radians. The relationship between the two is that one radian is equal to 57.3 degrees. And if the wheel make a semicircle, rotate, make a rotation of a, a semicircle, it is from this point to this point. We know that this angle will be 180. 180 it's equals to pi rad. This is a it's half a revolution. And then if it makes a full revolution, which will be 360 degrees, that will, the value will be 2 pi rad. It's two times the this angle, which will be 360. So we are dealing with motion, meaning that there is a velocity. We know that velocity is given by S divided by T, which is the rate of change of displacement. And it's given, its SI unit is meters per second. Now, since we are dealing with angular motion, we will say it's angular velocity and it's represented by omega. It is the rate of change of angular displacement, which is theta divided by T. The SI unit is rad per second. And then now a question they say, if radius OA completes one revolution in one second, what will be the angular velocity? One revolution, we know it's pi squared. It's 2 pi. They say it completes one revolution in one second. What will be the angular velocity? The angular velocity will be 2 pi rad per second. It made one revolution in one second. And then now they say if OA makes two revolutions in one second, what will be the, velo the angular velocity? Now our angular velocity will be, this is one revolution. We are told about two revolutions, meaning that we will say times two, because we are making two revolutions. Those two revolutions are made in one second. Therefore we'll say rad per second. What if now they what if now OA makes three revolutions? We are going to say the angular velocity 
it's equals to 2 pi which is 1 revolution times 3 because we are dealing with 3 revolutions and then it will be say it will say rads per second because those 3 revolutions are being made in 1 second and then from here we can conclude that there is a formula for angular velocity that says 2 pi n that's rads per second where our n it's the rotational frequency and it is given in revolutions per second this is our rotational frequency as a unit at revolutions per second revolutions per second rotational frequency rads per second angular velocity and then we also have our acceleration it's given by alpha and we know acceleration is the rate of change of velocity which will be the rate of change of angular velocity it's rads per second squared which is the SI unit and then now we have these formulas which are some of the formulas that we are going to use in this section we we'll say linear here <laughs> linear and then we'll say angular in this one uh, angular v is equals to u plus 80 in angular this will be w2 it's equals to w1 plus alpha t v squared it's equals to u squared plus 2as here it will be 2 squared this angular velocity number 2 Final angular velocity is equal to initial angular velocity squared plus 2 A, which is theta, acceleration, which is alpha. S, so UT. plus half eighty squared and then we will hey we will say here it's theta w one t plus half alpha t squared then the last one is s squared to u plus v divided by 2 times t and it will be theta is equals to divided by 2 times t and then we have these formulas that we can use if you have let's say you have a linear velocity and you want to get the angular velocity out of the linear velocity because we can tell that there is a relationship between these two since we were able to spot that from this triangle our angular displacement is this and our linear displacement will be this one this tells us that there is some sort of a relationship between these two and these are the formulas that we use to explore that relationship v is equal to w r if you have the radius and you are given the linear velocity if you need to calculate for the angular velocity you can use this formula and another formula that says linear acceleration is equal to the angular acceleration 
times the radius and we have the formula for work done which is 2 pi n t work done at the cost to t theta and then power is equals to this is power it's equals to t w t is equals to w r that this is torque and that is everything that we will need in this section so this is basically the end of our lesson i will see you on the next lesson